How has Brexit affected the Isle of Wight? We ask the important questions. How will the fixed link proposal affect the already vulnerable red squirrel population? And we have an exclusive interview with the award-winning head teacher of Wright Academy, Mrs Ballard. Good morning and welcome to BBC School Report. My name is Jack Millwood. And my name is Caitlin Croxall and we are representing Ride Academy. So the first report coming to you today is about the performing arts on the Isle of Wight. Hello, my name is Emily. I'm reporting to you about music on the Isle of Wight. We can't talk about the Isle of Wight without talking about the Isle of Wight Festival. For many of us, living here it is one of the highlights of the year and the tiny island hosting one of the most popular music events in the world. Everything changes here. Stars and celebs arrive in their helicopters, the ferries are booked up with queues of people all in festival spirit. Whatever the weather, people of all ages attend, making it a people's festival, and music reflects on all tasters. It becomes a whole village supplying everything you need for three days. We all join in. I shall be going again this year and I'm going with a group of my friends. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of this year, the first ever Isle of Wight festival happened in 1968, headlining Jefferson Aeroplane. Then about 10,000 to 15,000 people attended the festival. Back then, adults were a, adult tickets were just one pound fifty. The island has has produced some well-known musicians, and we have some up-and-coming ones here at Bright Academy ourselves. Today, I'm joined by Nicola, a student at Bright Academy. We're going to be talking about her music career and her upcoming events. So, what are you doing right now? I'm in a band called Montopia at Platform One. What is Platform One? Uh, Platform One is a college for music where you can go when you leave school. Is it 16 plus or? Um, yeah, but on Saturdays there's this Saturday rock school that year 7 upwards to year 11 you can go to. They put you in bands and then you have two concerts every year. How long have you been going to Platform One? Since the start of September this year. Now on to the drama section with Dominica. I want to talk about the opportunities of becoming an actor for young individuals here on the Isle of Wight. But first, let's talk with some of my friends. What do you think is making us, young actors from the Isle of Wight, being noticed so hard? Because there aren't as many opportunities on the island for people to become an actor or an actress. But there's not a lot of things for actors, like kids actors, there's like mainly more for adult actors. There are a lot of benefits from acting, for example confidence. I know that probably all of your teachers keep telling you that being on stage gives you more confidence, but it's true, it really helps. But you will always get those butterflies in your belly before performing, you just can't help it. Um, it also helps uh, when solving a problem because you can think of what other characters would do in that situation and think of the best way. It also helps you understand other people because you can imagine yourself in their situation. When you are an actor, you can be whoever you want to be. You can play any job, at any place, anywhere, at any time. It's up to you. The stage and performing arts are very popular career choices. That's why most primary and high school students have a dream of becoming an actor, including me. But it's not as uh, easy everywhere to achieve this goal, like on the Isle of Wight. Of course, there are some acting clubs, but they are very expensive, so not everyone can afford them. And I don't think this is fair, but if you can't afford them, then practice at home. Because, as they say, practice makes perfect. This is Dominica, reporting for Wright Academy. Thank you, Dominica and Emily. Now to have a look at the impacts of Brexit on the Isle of Wight. On the 23rd of June 2016, the United Kingdom made a historical choice to leave the European Union. There's been many implications and effects around the UK, but how did it affect our little island? We asked some members of academia what they thought. Uh, my name is Mr Pethick and I'm a teacher of mathematics here at Ryder Academy. Okay, so what did you vote in the 2016 Brexit referendum? Uh, in the 2016 referendum, I voted to remain in the European Union. Okay. Uh, why did you vote for this? Um, I personally feel like we've got more control over our own destiny in a globalised world within a partnership between our own country and countries within the European area who share uh, similar beliefs to us and who work in partnership with us. I don't think at the time being it's affected the island too much because we're obviously in negotiations as we speak, but I think in reality it will affect the island in an adverse way because this is an island that is dependent on 
uh, a number of things which is tied to the European project. I think things like agriculture will be hit in a very bad way because subsidies that come from the European Union will be removed and there's no obvious uh, way in which we can fund those from our own budget without um, taking a hit somewhere else. I think we also rely on tourism and I think that is uh, an, an issue because our, our tourist economy effectively um, is interdependent with a number of things um, at a national level and I think losing that, that backing at a level of the European Union is probably going to be a negative thing. Um, my name is Miss Sparrow and I'm Deputy Head of English here at Ride Academy. So what did you vote in 2016? I voted to leave the European Union. So what did you vote this week? Um, I voted for a number of different reasons. Um, so one of the first reasons is because of the laws that are made uh, by the European government. Um, and so I think it's really important that a country has the right to make their own legislation. Um, and so between 1993 and 2014, 26% of the laws that were made um, that affected Britain were actually made within the European Union. Um, and so I don't always think that you can have a one-size-fits-all uh, one model um, and you need to be able to adapt your laws depending on your country. And so I think that's really important that we've got the sovereignty over our own laws. Um, I also think, which is obviously a very contentious issue, um, that I voted because of immigration. Um, as a teacher, I can see the effects of overcrowding in the classroom um, and also the effects um, as a citizen on the NHS. I think that being unable to control um, immigration is a major issue. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have immigration. Obviously, that's very um, positive for a healthy economy and you need um, people to be coming uh, into the country. However, I think there just needs to be able to have some restrictions over that um, so that you're able to control um, immigration into your country. Um, I also think people often say that uh, leaving the EU may have a negative impact on trade, which I do understand because a lot of our exports, I think it's 44% of our exports, go to um, European countries. But I think sometimes we're limiting ourselves um, with regards to our trades with other countries, and we haven't got any major trade deals with countries like China and India. I think possibly leaving the EU would open up to more links with um, countries such as the two that I've just mentioned, or uh, will allow us to go off um, and form links with other Commonwealth countries that we used to have a lot of stronger links with. Okay. What do you think it's affected the island? Um, I think at the moment it's not really affected the island very much um, because we haven't really seen the impact of Brexit and it's just been a lot of uh, negotiations and so we've just been listening to um, the repercussions of talks about it as opposed to actually um, experiencing any change. We would like to thank the teachers of Ryan Academy for their thoughts and inputs regarding Brexit. Uh, this is Owen signing off for the BBC on behalf of Ryan Academy. Interesting debate there indeed. Now we're going to take a look at Arden life. Two years ago the Isle of Wight was falsely called out to be ghetto by Ofsted's David Hall. They all think of this as holiday land, but it is shocking. It's a ghetto. However, this is not the case. The beautiful island is among the UK's national treasures. Um, the fact that it's the largest and second most populous island in the UK. Queen Victoria had her house here and ride here, which, is around, which was around during her reign, is the oldest in the world, does not even begin to break the ice on how great the Isle of Wight is. Over the years, the Isle of Wight has gone its fair share of famous visitors. We have the island born such as Bear Grylls, Anthony Minghella and Jeremy Irons. Lots of famous people have enjoyed the island's beauty, such as the likes of Winston Churchill and Queen Victoria, who even lived in Osborne House, which was then used as her summer home during the long hot summer months. The island has a very unique geographical setting and it has its own microclimate which harbours thousands of unique animals special to the UK. Most visitors get here, they use the fast and unique ferry services to cross the Solent. The island currently has the only running hovercraft service in the UK and it takes a speedy 15 minutes to cross the width of the Solent, that is two and a half and five miles. Hi, my name is Rosie. I live on the Isle of Wight and my school report is about nature. The island is a place of outstanding beauty with many examples of wildlife unique to the island. Our school, is Ride Academy, is set in a stunning location from some windows, we can see right across to Portsmouth, and, but we can also see green woodland and trees. 
In these woods live the red squirrels. Everyone here knows about them and we make sure that they will remain protected. Since the year 2000, this species has declined rapidly all over the UK. Numbers in the UK have fallen from at one time a high that's thought to be around 3.5 million to a current estimated population of around 120,000. The Isle of Wight is one of the few places in England that red squirrels still thrive. I am delighted to introduce Helen who runs the Isle of Wight Red Squirrel Trust who is here to tell us a little bit more about the charity. Hello, Hello Rosie. Hello Helen. Thank you so much for coming in today. Could you tell us how you got involved in the Red Squirrel Trust? Oh, it was quite by accident. Back in 1991, I volunteered to go around the woods on the island picking up hazelnuts. And the little animals, the mice and the squirrels and the voles, they all open them in a different way. Mm. So we actually found that there weren't very many squirrels about, not as okay. many as we expected. This was because the hurricanes, a few years previously, had knocked down the trees and the corridors. Mm. Something went in the local paper and since then it's just all taken off. We okay. had a huge response and it's just steamrolled. Wow, okay. So what do you do to protect them? We do all sorts of things. Monitoring is very, very important so that we know what's going on, so people phone in, ring, email, and this is called citizen science, so anybody can do it. We put all that together, we do newsletters, we do talks, woodland management, we look after squirrels, sick, injured, I actually do post-mortems as well, oh, okay. and that's been very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, how many red squirrels do you think are on the island? Are, are there any grey ones? There are no grey ones. The estimate is round about the 3,000 mark, but I've actually started a study to get a more definitive answer. Okay. What, and finally, how would the fixed link affect the red squirrel population? If we had a fixed link, then we would lose our red squirrels, or it would be an ongoing, very expensive battle to try mm. and keep them because it's so easy for the greys to get across. Mm. We have to be very, very careful as it is in case one snuck into a car mm -hmm. or got onto the boat as do sometimes does happen yeah. but if we had a fixed link it would probably be game over yeah thank you very much helen you're welcome this is rosie reporting for ride academy some lovely reports there time to take a look at our own school with an exclusive interview from our own head teacher first question why did you decide to apply for the job on the isle of wight um, I've loved all the Isle of Wight, I think, all my life, um, certainly since I was a young gal. Um, I'm very interested in schools that actually aren't doing well or indeed weren't doing, doing well. Um, and read a lot about the Isle of Wight and the underperformance of schools. Um, areas that I've worked, I've worked in Cardiff and Southampton, one a capital city, and obviously of Wales, and then Southampton being a big city. Um, seemingly have lots of areas where you can see why education actually for some children um, hasn't gone too well mostly because of big areas of deprivation um, but looking at the Isle of Wight it was so challenging I think to look at that and to see actually what is going wrong with the school school system because clearly something wasn't right um, at one stage the BBC published a list of um, all local authority areas um, and the performance of schools with regards to Ofsted ratings um, and the Isle of Wight at that particular time was the lowest um, across the country with all other local authorities um, being ones that were up north and that was with regards to schools that were good or better. So the lowest number of schools in the country of schools that were good or better. What immediate change did you want to make to the school when you took charge? The first thing I wanted to do when I took charge is to make it a school that existed for the students with the students being the absolute priority of the, the school. Final question, what do you see for the future of the school considering the supposed merger with Sandown? We're not merging with Sandown, <laughs> there's no chance of that. Um, in fact, the government have agreed that Sandown Bay Academy um, is gonna be handed back to the local authority and from the 1st of September, um, that will run as an all through school. Um, I've stayed involved with Sandown Bay Academy um, to support the new leadership team there with that transition. I didn't want to be part of something that was school closure 
um, but actually I'm more than happy what we've got that we can share with Sandown up to the 31st of August that we're helping to, to support them. Exciting stuff. So now we're going to go over to our report on health and a bit about gaming and how gaming can affect your health. Did you know the newly released game Taking the World by Storm, Fortnite Battle Royale is negatively impacting the young audience that plays it? Studies show that the game is causing withdrawal symptoms and anger issues. We found out that 85 hours worth of game time is the average time people played the game. We are very surprised about the results. Did you know that too much game can affect your eyesight? But did you know that it can actually cure dyslexia? Gaming is a big issue for health and major studies show that games such as Fortnite are the reason for social exclusion and diet issues. But the NHS have said that children that play up to one hour a day are more sociable, happy and less hyperactive. The issue is tricky and complex as there is not yet concrete evidence pointing to whether these games are bad or not. Continuing the health section, we now hand you over to our Isle of Wight St John's Ambulance correspondent, Liam. I have been involved with St John's Ambulance for about three years now. I go once a week on a Tuesday at the centre in Newport for about two hours. I meet up with people and learn first aid. I am now training to be an advanced member. Some time ago, my parents and I saw a man hit a traffic light. The impact was so hard, the light fell down and in front of his car. He came out with a minor scratch on his left arm. He did not want to help, but I cut the wire from the car battery as the bonnet had been pushed up to make the car safe. The St John's Ambulance Brigade was formed in 1887 by Aaron Enduring story goes all the way back to the 11th century. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the first knights who set up the hospital to care for the sick people. The eight point cross on our volunteers' uniform is the symbol worn by those knights who provided free medical care in the first hospitals in Jerusalem. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you in BBC School Report 2019.